get this party started man we gotta get this party started it's a real party dj F. dizzy if you don't know him go follow him he's the black wealth official dj in the building we having a great time man but we got the headliner right now that's what they all been waiting for all day what we've been waiting for for the last couple weeks we about to have a great time. We about to get keys dropped all on us. I hope y'all got y'all pens and y'all paper ready. You know, this is a legend in the game. She's been doing her thing for a minute now. And uh, we're honored hey. to have her on the Future Black Wealth platform. She is about to bring it home for y'all, drop those keys for you guys. Tell three people to get in here right now. Right now. Get in here right now. It's going down for the next hour. I want to give it up. For the amazing, the beautiful Lisa Ray McCoy. Drop those sevens. Drop those sevens. Drop those sevens. What's happening, y'all? Let's go, Shake DJ. For me. Shake those keys for me. Yeah, yeah. Shake those keys. All hey, right. Appreciate it, DJ. Hey, what's happening? What's up? Hey. How you doing? I'm fantastic, man. I'm I'm waiting on y'all. I've been in here listening to a couple of people and everything. You know what I mean? So I you know I got my little keys. Hey. <laughs> hey. She ready? She ready? I, I, know, I know you. I know you. My little outfit. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. I know you. Rich, rich. I ain't know if you needed keys or not. You know, people <laughs> open the door for you. You know, opening y'all. You, you don't yeah, need to my keys look. My keys look like this. Just one. Just you know one. What I mean? And that don't jingle. So I, I, I'm gonna put something together. And just That's okay. okay. That's all right. I love the background. I love the background you got going over there. I'm feeling the whole vibe, the vision boards and stuff. Because let me tell you, I'm a visual person and we learn that way. We learn visually. We learn by the things that we see, the things that we dream of in picture mm -hmm. form. And I am a total advocate for visionary, visual, seeing. It says, write it down and make it plain upon tablets. That's Habakkuk verse 2, chapter 2. Y'all, come on. Now you know. Come in with the fire. Come in with the fire. Hey, wait. Yeah, she didn't even wait. She dropped the keys early in the interview. I, you know, I was just complimenting the vision board. This is what it's about because you two have been genius to be able to even put this together to have such a panel this is not your first time you guys have been doing this many many times before but you keep doing it therefore there's a success story behind it because you're not only giving people like me a platform in which to preach teach and share but for them to also do the same thing so what i like to do is when i'm talking i like to listen as well because you know you got one of those friends that talk so much but doggone it, she never listened to you and never asked you how you doing. And you looking like, well, really, <laughs> this is going to be different. We're going to make sure that we involve all the people. We're going to make sure that we can get as many questions that we can and answer as many and hear those, those voices. And when I say hear the voices, I mean as them typing in and being able to come into our summit virtually, welcome, and say, we, we want to hear everything you want to say every question because no question is silly crazy stupid uh uh foolish any of that you can learn by the craziest of questions out of there so we're gonna make sure that we open that up for you let's do it let's get into it then well shoot i mean you really don't need no introduction um <laughs> I, we already got there she done took over you know and, and clearly you can go so david I, you want to kick off the first question yeah, yeah, you, yeah, look, yeah, you look like you're ready you i'm ready i've been feet. ready uh, i'm like, <laughs> ready you know, look, okay. I don't even need no introduction. Hi, I am Lisa Ray. You have probably seen me on Players Club. <laughs> yay, yay. Yeah. And hey. my chance that you ain't seen that movie, you've been under a rock. <laughs> but just in case that you have, you've had an opportunity to also see me in a marvelous sitcom called All of Us, which was loosely based about Will and Jada Pinkett Smith life. And even if you missed that, that's okay. Because I had a reality show called Lisa Ray, The Real McCoy. 
mm-hmm. to show you personally the inside of who I am, my heart inside my home. But you could have missed that too. And if you did, you could have seen me on single ladies. Huh? Oh, y'all, y'all know about that. Okay, that's, that's right. Cool. And right now you could be seen looking at me on Fox Soul on cocktails with the Queens because I have a talk show on there Monday nights at 6 p.m. Uh, Western time. And I love doing it. I'm on family business for BET. I'm on U- UMC show called House Divided. So I'm working. I am successful. I am a mother, I am a cousin, I am an auntie, I am a daughter, I am a philanthropist, I'm a humanitarian, I'm a cook, I'm a grandmother, I am mm. a woman. So mm. therefore I'm human. Therefore there's a lot of you out there just like me. And so that makes us relatable because whatever I can do, you damn sure can do yourself. And whatever you can do, I may wanna hear about those things too because that's how we get exposure and experience because we get it from our moms, our aunties, people on TV, people up under a rock, just in case y'all didn't see Players Club, them people, y'all under the rock. But I'm saying we're sharing because we care because this is a time right now in which we're fighting. We're fighting for our rights because black lives matter. And when we say black lives matter, yes, we mean all lives matter. But we're just stating that because it hasn't been equal with us and our people, mm-hmm. that we want to want it to be equal. And so that we're standing up and fighting for that, saying no more. We want our voice to be heard because, yes, our ancestors went through that. But guess what? We're going through it right now. It's been unveiled. They already has messed with the economy. And when you mess with the economy, you mess with the people. When you mm-hmm. mess with the people, you mess with the community. When you're messing with the community, you're messing with the families. So we have single parents out there that's trying to raise our kids and we got this going on. We got to teach our babies. So therefore we got to take care of ourselves. So because of this pandemic that's been going on, it has made us so equal that we're all sitting down and losing money. Mm. Mm. Our portfolios have been attacked from wall street crashing. Our jobs has been attacked because the pandemic of COVID-19 has attacked us. So we're sitting down, not collecting a check, not making the money and living off of our savings. Well, what happens when you don't have any savings? What happens when you're living from paycheck to paycheck? This is what this pandemic should teach you to restructure, rethink and to refocus. How do I do that? One of the main things that I absolutely go on and believe in is vision, vision, being able to see it. But if you can't see it, you have to think it first. You have to write it down. It's like a checklist. When you go to the grocery store, you have your list of what you're going to buy when you go to the grocery store. So you're not running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Right. And if you are, stop it. Stop it now. Get focused. Write that list so when you go down the dairy aisle, you're getting your cheese and your milk at the same time. You're not going over here to the meat department, then going all the way back to get the bread and then going all the way back on the vegetables. And because you left your milk when you was in the dairy product, you forgot it. You got to go all the way back. No, no. Have your list. Mm -hmm. It's a list of accomplishment. Check, I got my milk. Check, I got my cheese. Check, I got my vegetables. Check, I got my soup. Check, I have the things that I have on my list. When you go to the counter to pay, you good. When you get home, you have not forgotten about anything. Well, what if, I'm going to pose this question to you guys, and I want to make sure that I hear you loud and clear. What (laughs) if you don't write down anything and you rely on just your mindset, but we got so much going on. If you write it down, you make it clear. What if we do that for our lives? Mm. What if we write a journal, a diary, a checklist, a things to do list for our lives? And what if we make it easy? What if it's in picture form? See, what I have behind me right here is the beginning of a vision board. Mm. See, I like to write everything down and I like to see it. See, you can have different categories that you want to tackle on your vision board. I have a couple right here and I know you can't read it. That's why you got me. (laughs) <laughs> well, love, you got health, career, money, 
Can I hear y'all say money? Money, 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 money. money, money, money. money. See, DJ Adizzy is supposed to be ready right there. Make, make that money, don't let it make you. Make that money, don't let it make you. Hey, get your keys for that. I've been waiting to say that to you since I saw a player's club. That's my life. I, 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 I dream this into existence. Okay. <laughs> I need to be physically instead of virtually now. Right. <laughs> you got all kind of categories here. Family, travel, spiritual, whatever it is that you want to conquer. Let's just say money. Mm. Everybody need money. Money don't make you happy, but it show sure ha help you to get happiness. Mm. It does because it's going to help you pay your bills. It's going to help you pay your rent. It's going to give you some savings. It's going to allow you to be able to have a lifestyle. And we deserve a lifestyle. You yes. deserve a lifestyle no matter what you do because life beats us up already. I want to live life. I want to laugh. I want to do as much as I possibly can. I want bigger, better, more. But, but what does that look like? What does that piece to the puzzle of my life look like? I need money. Well, the first thing I have to see is, do I have a job? If you don't have a job, then you know that's the first thing that you have to do. Right. That goes right here, job. Then you start doing the necessary things to get the job because you need the money. You need the growth of the money. Once you get the money, what is it that you want to do with your money? What are your needs? Is it a mortgage? Is it rent? Is it car note? Is it groceries? Is it travel money? What does that look like? For me, I have dollar signs up here. I said money to spare. When you have money to spare, that means vacation. That means you sitting on the beach with a pina colada or some wine or some champagne and you are looking at everybody go past that water and that stars and sun and it's glistening on you. Mm -hmm. You can only do that if you have your stuff together. Facts. And that is what we need to do. We need to now restructure our thinking because we need to take care of our families. We need to take care of self. Self-help is huge. Mm -hmm. Write it down and make it plain. What does the pieces of your puzzle look like? Job, career, finance, money, savings. And when you have your savings, what does your team look like? Mm -hmm. Your team is your banker. There your you team know. is the people that handles your money. You have the right to ask any question that you need to when somebody's taking care of your money. It's called a consultation. <laughs> you have a consultation with somebody, you say, well, tell me what it is that I can do. And because we have the almighty power of the phone now, Google goes a long way and so does social media. Look on there and find a, a financial expert. Find a, a wealth management company. Find a stockbroker. Find these people so you can say, this is the money that I can spare. This is the risk that I'm willing to take. What can be done with my money at this level because I'm trying to get here? And don't get discouraged because it may be a plan that's five years, seven years, and you may go, I need money right now. Well, that's why we're young and capable to make that money and work now and to roll up your sleeves now. Right. This is what you call work the workload so we can have it easier later. So you cannot be afraid of that. Even with me, when I had lost money on my portfolio. The first thing I said was, I got to get that money back. But also now I got to teach my daughter. I got to teach her about credit and what credit is about because we don't understand the importance of our credit. And I did hear, was it, uh, was it Raquel or Rachel? Raquel. Raquel. Raquel Robinson. I talking about credit. And I chimed in a little bit and, and was listening to the very end of what she was saying. But I was so very glad to be able to have someone and on our panel discussion to be able to talk about that because we as black people don't understand the importance of credit because you get student loans that you got to pay back. You also buy a home, which is one of the big purchases that we buy in a car. Those three things stay on our credit forever. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure that you know how to play the game so that won't hinder you and fall behind you. So then when you get ready to, to finance something else, they won't feel like, oh, you can't afford that. You know, that's too much because they like to dictate to us. Right now is the best time to change the tone of that for us to learn and to answer questions. So I would advise everyone out there to do a vision board because the vision board could be your life. It is picture a picture form of 
the things that you want in your life, the goals that you want in your life. Say it's health. And I don't have a six pack. I ain't never had a six pack. I got a two pack and I'm cool with that. So if I got a two pack and I see something in the magazine and I'm going through there and I see this young lady with uh, a smooth ab and nice thighs, uh, that could be me. I'm, mm. full, I'm taking that out. I'm cutting that up and I'm placing that on my board because every time I see that, I know what that is for me and my eyes only. That's for me is, oh, I want my stomach like that. Well, what am I doing to get my stomach like that? That's the other piece. Mm -hmm. See, everything connects. What's the other piece? The piece is you got to work out. So I have a question for you, uh, Miss mm -hmm. Lisa Ray. Um, and you talked about credit. So I want to talk about financial awareness. Um, and you've been through a lot. You've been, you know, a lot of things, a lot of journey. Your portfolio is amazing. Um, your resume is, I mean, clearly. When did you first become like, what kind of financial principles were you instilled with? Was that when you were a child? Was it when you were growing up? Like, when did you finally, you know, become aware financially of these principles such as credit and investing and some of the things that you've implemented in your portfolio? I'm going to tell you this, and this is so fun. I'm glad you asked that because I didn't become aware until I was grown, grown. Mm. Although my father was a businessman and I knew that we owned multiple different businesses, I was just in awe of everything he owned. I didn't really know what it took to own anything. When my father was, was murdered and was taken away from me, then I was left to fend for myself with my mom. And I moved out, got a, a condo, and I got these assessments, and then I got this tax bill. Mm. And I'm thinking, what? Well, taxes. I, I bought my condo. What What you mean? I bought out right. I don't owe anything else. And then on that bill, it said <clears throat> local park district. Mm. It said fire department. And I said, fire department? I ain't never had no fire. I ain't never used the police department or the fire department. What I got to pay them for? Mm -hmm. I did not know mm. that that's where your tax dollars go because that's what you pay for in your area. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to have to always do that so i started knowing about business started realizing i need to know more about my surroundings and what's going on you know and then the next thing was voting it made me realize that i had a responsibility to vote for my community who is the police chief who is the surgeon general who is the is the the um you know what i mean the prosecutor, the, the the judges, the Supreme Court, all of that, I can vote on that. And so I had to understand business. Mm. And so once I got into wanting to save money, I started rounding off money. Say you save nine hundred dollars. For me, I even wanted to save five hundred or a thousand. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So that means that nine hundred, I had to put a hundred dollars with it to make it a thousand. Right. So I played these head games with myself to see how much money I could save. But more importantly, as my money started going out because I was grown and on my own, and realized, oh, some of this money is going to rent and to cable and to light and to my phone bill. What do I have left? Is it enough for me to live? And then I realized that it wasn't. Mm. So that it dictated to me that I had to do more. I had to do something different. And if you have to do something different because you're not satisfied nor complacent with your life, you want bigger, better, more too, then you got to do more. And mm -hmm. so I started becoming aware of what my father actually was doing in all the businesses. I said he had to have capital mm -hmm. because he didn't have to necessarily put up so much money. This property helped get this property and then that same property helped get that property because it was collateral. Mm hmm. We have it in our homes as well. When right. you buy yourself a nice home, a nice condo, a nice townhouse, you have equity, equity. In, your, in your property. That's yours. You can get that out, you know what I mean, and get a business. And so I started realizing that I needed to educate myself about business, especially if you're going to be an entrepreneur. Yes. Yes. So, so we uh we recognized you at first for the acting, right? And mm -hmm. then you've gotten into all these different businesses. But just talk about your your work ethic and what it even took for you to get on the Hollywood stage. You know, we got so many people that say they want to do these different things, mm -hmm. but they just see you on there, but they don't see the work ethic behind that. So, just talk about all your business ventures, your you know acting, and just what it took for you to get to where you're at. One of my biggest mistakes was is not having enough confidence in me. Mm. Once yeah. I got here, 
and I learned a little bit here and learned a little bit here, I felt like I had to become a cookie cutter of what was already out there. So say that Halle Berry was hot and she's out there. I'm like, oh, I got to be small. Maybe if I cut my hair short, maybe <laughs> I was thinking all kind of things. And my publicist, she said to me, you talk too fast and you have this little, this little, um, this little um, uh, accent. And it, it shut me down because then I started over pronunciating all of my words and talking <laughs> like this and I was not being myself at all. And I felt fake. Mm. And so I was torn inside because I really wanted to make it. You tend to listen to that person that has been there and you're like, oh, okay, I need to do this. I need to do that. Had I would have had my confidence in which I had with me when I came here, if I would have kept that, then that never would have been able to happen to me. But I don't think that that's going to happen with this generation that's coming up. Not at all. Because when I tell you they got it, they don't need their ego stroke, nor do they need us to tell them that they got it. Because they're on YouTube showing it. They're right. on Instagram being Insta famous. You know what I'm saying? So they're out there. Why I say confidence is because you need it. You mm -hmm. need it when you go in that room. Because once you go in the room, you're going to realize you're not the only person in that room. And mm -hmm. you also need to realize that you need to stand out as well. But stand out in a way in which that the whole room is going to look at you, but not look at you in a way that they want you to go back to where you came from. Not that. You know what I mean? We have opportunity now that's really different that we can be on social media to showcase our talent. So me not having that confidence kind of shook me a little bit. But once I got grounded and I realized, no, I do have something to offer. Sell you, mm -hmm. whoever you are, believe in you. That's what you have to do because yeah. no one is like you and you are original. And so there's room for a you because before there, there was a, a that person and a that person, what nobody that was them. So they came through. So they're already of them. So be who you are unapologetically you. Love it. Love it. So um, I, know he, I know he was saying, I'm sorry, but he was saying to, to state some of the businesses that I have yes. and I'm a new business owner. I'm a grassroots level business owner. Yes, I'm an actress and I work for someone and I am responsible for bringing entertainment. That's just one side. That's a lot like what many of us go through. When you lose your job or you get tired of your job, it's like, what else am I going to do? Mm -hmm. I feel the same way sometimes and I have. So I need residual money when I'm not acting because the acting is like this. Up and down like a roller coaster. Just like you can be fired from your job and your whole career is just out the window because they don't care anymore. We need to be able to have something that we can fall back on. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started thinking. What else can I do? So I started going and writing down my passions. What am I passionate about? Mm -hmm. Because if I don't have the passion for it, I'm not going to do it well because it's going to become a job to me and not a career. That's the difference. And so I said, I love creating. I love talking. I love giving advice. I love gifting. I love to be able to build up. So what can I do? Is that radio? Is that talk show? Is that what? And then I said, creating, creating. And I thought about my gene line. I wear white and I've been wearing white for 17 years. And right. so I dare and struggle to look different. So a lot of the jeans don't come in a way in which I want to um, buy them. I'm like, dang, I wish these jeans had feathers on them. I wish these jeans, now I can make them because I own my own jean company. And so that's a grassroots level company. And I'm learning, when I tell you this pandemic has been so good to me mm -hmm. because it has allowed me to restructure my business because it made me sit down and think about marketing and how I want to portray my business. And so I said, I got this business that I'm bringing to you because all people love jeans because jeans are universal. We all buy jeans. And I got that stretch in the jean that's for the girl to get junk in her trunk. And right about now, we all got junk in our trunk. But <laughs> 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 Whether it worked out for it or not, you got it. You know what I mean? I'm <laughs> going to put them in some PZI jeans by Lisa Ray. But <laughs> I also have a, um, a furniture and mattress line called mm -hmm. LR Home Styles. I'm a home girl. I love to stay at home and cook and organize and entertain. And most people don't know that about me. And I said to myself, why don't I use what I got 
to get what I want. See there, David, you supposed to say that line. You forgot about that line. <laughs> I gotta go back and watch the movie tonight. <laughs> so I started being able to say, okay, mattress, furniture, creativity, a black mattress. Because when I went out to the warehouses and the manufacturers, I didn't see anybody look like me, meaning a minority and a woman. And I said, right now, we're in support of black businesses. I'm a black business owner. So I have the first black mattress. And that is a contrast for Lisa Ray because Lisa Ray is known for white. But I said, <laughs> we always been, been sleeping on white mattresses. But oh, we got a choice now. <laughs> Lisa Black by Lisa Ray. <laughs> go to the virtual vendor. Go to the virtual vendor booth, yes. the expo, and get a copy of Black Mattress, though, and make sure you screenshot and send it to Keys of Black Wealth. Tag Lisa go. Ray. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, Miss Lisa Ray, talk to me a little bit about when you're like making business deals, when you're thinking about entrepreneurship and things like that, when you're investing in things, what are some of the things you're thinking about when you're making these type of deals? I, I talk, You talked already about passion, but like when you're looking at partnering with people, when you're looking at investing, when you're looking at evaluating if an ideal is good or not, um, what do you, what do you, what's going through your mind in that process? First, first of all, it has to be something that you, uh, you want to do and not because someone told you that it was a good opportunity. Because sometimes you can over-educate yourself about something and you really don't get it at all. You just educate yourself <laughs> because you don't know. And, and, and that's, not really, that's not really a business that you're going to give 100% to. Right. Because you're going to feel like you're in school. You know what I mean? You're going to feel like you're just there listening just to get the, the know of the opportunity. You want to align yourself with people that know your brand and know your passion and know what you're about. So you're not going to school. You're sitting in something that you feel like, I want to learn this and I want to have more of this. And so listen and observe how people talk to you, too, because either they talk at you or with you. Now, the thing about that is we can all sing together, but we can't talk together. Right? Yeah. So understand that people got a gift to gab. Show sure enough. And it's called hustle. And hey, I'll be the first one to let you know we all need to have hustle because you can also be an educated fool. Did y'all get that? An yes. educated, educated fool. fool. What that you. means is that you're so book smart that you don't have no common sense. And <laughs> lo and behold, <gasps> like a pretty dumb woman. I, I can't stand it. <laughs> you don't do that. Don't be that. You know what I'm saying? It's like <laughs> when you over the prettiness, you got to be able to have a conversation. And so I always woman. say to keep somebody around you that is smarter than you. Yeah. Have that mentor. Have someone that you can look up to. Have someone that you're accessible to that you can ask questions to because when i was just getting in the business i was embraced by all of the back black actresses but there was just a couple that i really befriended vivica fox was one of them vivica helped me with my first contract and i was paying my hair person out of my pocket because he wasn't in the union and so i would have to go out in the trailer and let him do my hair because he couldn't come on set wow. and i was doing that for the first year and when she found out she said wait a minute you're the star of the show. They owe that to you. You can have them put him in the union because he's doing the lead actress. Mm. There you go. Well, wow. But here's the thing. If I wouldn't have never opened my mouth and say anything, she wouldn't have known to share that with me. Mm. Yes. So therefore, you have to have somebody around that you're not afraid to talk to. And I really always want to have somebody that their history speaks to me because someone history let you know where they've been. Mm -hmm. And it's going to also let you know somewhat of where they're going, because if they are in line with success here, nine times out of 10, they knew how to keep that together. They know how to get it again. I want to be around those kind of people. So it's important for me. I keep a couple of people in my back pocket, my pastor, because mm -hmm. I want to be spiritually aligned mm -hmm. because I need him to tell me about my tithes because I want to be financially blessed as well that way. I want to be able to keep my money. I keep a financial broker because I need for him to understand my goals financially and where I'm trying to get to. I keep me an old diva around me. So right. she can always tell me how to check myself and keep it classy and if I'm doing too much. Mm -hmm. Mama, mama always know because she knew, she knew you first. So I keep her around. I got two girlfriends that I've known since second grade. They know me as well. So when I get a little 
up here they go girl bring it down and it's like oh okay <laughs> right um and then you know i keep a professional person that's you know in my life as well that is business because it's something to be said about a business person a business person likes to build they like to see things come to fruition and so if you're having any kind of business ideas guess what their interest is already peaked and they're like oh what are you working on do tell you get a chance to pick their mind and like I said, Google and the internet and social media right now is at our fingertips. You have information right there. So I would say read up on it. Make sure your negotiation skills are up to par. And part of that is really just knowing your value and knowing, knowing what your bottom line is and what you accept. Because you can need a thousand dollars. But once you go in the room and you've done your research to see what type of company this is, is this a Fortune 500 company or is this just a little mom and pop establishment or whatever? You got to have a number that you're going to start with and a number that you're going to not go below to be able to start negotiating with. And then call their bluff mm -hmm. all the time. Let them know that you know who you are and let them know that, hey, the last job I had paid me here. If you guys want me to work with you, I'm not afraid of a partnership because that's what it is. You do your part and I'm doing my part because we're building this business together. Then you get equity in the company then because then you're putting in sweat in there at your building. And so then they are also relying on your name value and your brand as well. So you both are taking a risk. So if we're both taking a risk and you want to let come down off my money some, then let's talk about back money, back pay. Right. There's always a way to be able to grow within the company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I got I got a question because black women are the most educated now. Black women are the fastest group of uh, the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs, <laughs> and you're very successful. And I hear a lot of times where black women say it's kind of hard to find a black man on that same level. And I heard one of your interviews where you're talking about. They had said something like, would he be at a Burger King? And you said if he owned multiple franchises, that's the only reason why he would be at that Burger King. So let's talk to, talk to us about finding people that match your you know, success level, finding people that match your drive and your hunger. This is what I mean by that. If I'm successful and I'm bringing something to the table because I have my list of what I want that man to be, guess what? He has a list, too, that he wants us to uphold. He wants someone that's going to take care of him, take care of the family, to bread children, to be able to know how to cook and not be a microwave baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Things that they have on their list. So it's only fair for us to look at you guys' list as right. men, as you guys are looking at our list. So there's a lot of women that don't build our men up. So they are allowed and required to rise to the occasion. See, love will make you do a lot of different things. When there's love in the household, we can lead you all by the nose just like you lead us by the nose. Because if you get a person's mind, our body will follow. Right. But there has to be also trust there. And because there's no trust in our generation right now, we're not sure that the black man is going to take care of us. We're not sure if we can go back to mama and daddy's house. Well, hell. We're not even sure if we're going to be able to keep our own jobs now. So therefore, we're scared, we're nervous, and we want to be independent because independence makes us say, I don't have to rely on anybody but myself, and I don't have to answer to anybody but me. But that's not a partnership. That's not a marriage. That's not building. That's not being evenly yoked to build each other up together. That's what we have to learn to be able to build each other up. I want to bring this up only because it has everything to do with what I'm talking about now. I said something about Nicki Minaj. And I said that I wanted her to bow down and I wanted her to pay homage to the people that came before her. And I was talking about Little Kim also in that as well, because I know that they have a beef. Um, maybe perhaps I did not say that right or it was I was misunderstood. But what I meant was, or what I want to add to, is that. We need to coexist together, that we need to love on each other. We need to show them that we know how to unite together and build together. That's what I meant by bowing down, meaning give her her props because she came before you. Because guess what? You're going to give that torch to someone, too, because then you're going to really sit down as well. Yeah. But we all do. We all do at a time. It's not your time all the time. That's not even real. 
And so that's what I meant. So what I mean by now is that us as women, we need to love on you men. You men need to love on us, but we need to show you that we can step up to the plate and be a woman. And you guys can take care of your family and be the man that the Bible tell you to be. Because it says when a man findeth a wife, he findeth a good thing. Okay. And go. it is to forsake all others. But we got to trust that. So in business, you got to also trust your business people that you're with, business partners. Because we all shady. You know what I mean? You don't want to be watching behind your back when you're doing business. So if you get yourself a good partner that you share your bed with, you can roll over and talk about business and success. But I can't do that with someone that's just coming out of college. I can't. Right. No. I, so I feel, I'm like Beyonce and Jay Z. The hustle got a match. I want right. you to be the boss, so you don't have to call off. We can go and be off, 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 off into the sunset. No, that makes exact. I mean, that makes perfect sense. I mean, mm -hmm. especially even what you're talking about as far as paying deference. You know, I think that's something that our our culture, our, our generations are losing. You know, and not understanding the importance of paying de uh, deference. David and I were both Greek, right? So I'm a Delta. He's an Alpha. And like I'm one thing that we, I mean, you know, oh, <laughs> but one thing that you learn in that aspect is like paying deference, paying homage. You know, what I'm saying to your ancestors, the people who came before you. So I understood you know, what you said, uh, what you were saying as far as that. And that's, I think that's something that our culture can use a little bit more of, um, you know, that mentor, those people who yeah. gained success prior to you. I mean, you got to pay homage. You got to pay deference. You got to give back, you know, so that's just respect. It's just respect. Right. And I know that she's worked with several different people, but it's like shock the world, shock the world. Go to that one that you know you had beef with, correct it. Make it right. And y'all both walk out at the same time and just shock the world and right. show them that as black women, we can do that. That that's big. That's huge. That's changing the world. That's changing that's changing people's perspective. Yeah, don't you know let us mean? come together. Don't let us come together. That hey. part. That, that part. part. That part. So let's get into another part, you know, because I, I ain't part of the black woman part. You know, y'all y'all over here vibing with each other. Let's uh, go. Let's go to something else. Let's go to something else, right? So I have these books behind me, and I know that you wrote a book, co-wrote a book. Uh, you were in the process of writing a book. I know you were doing I that. I wrote a book. Okay. I wrote the four word for a book or two, you know, okay. what I mean? and um, the Marvin Gaye story, uh, a couple of others. Um, but I haven't really gotten into the the book. I'm more into a series. I want to sell a series about my life, about everything as far as being a first lady and an actress and a black yeah. woman making it from it. You know, it's been a lot that I have done and yeah. a lot that I can share with people and a lot that people don't know. You yeah, know? that first lady. I didn't know about that till I started uh, doing some research and stuff. Talk, talk to that because that's black wealth on a on a different yeah, continent, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I um I got married um to the president of Turks and Caicos Islands, mm -hmm. and it made me the first lady. And to date, I am the first African American actress to be a first lady. Mm. The first actress <laughs> to be a first lady was actually Grace Kelly, mm -hmm. and for me, you know, Turks and Caicos is uh, a West Indies territory, which is governed and ran by the UK, by Queen Elizabeth. And so when they got word that, you know, I was an American actress and that I was marrying into, you know, Turks and Caicos Islands, um, it, it kind of changed everything. You know what I mean? I came out to the trumpets. I, you know, I had the... the coming to America. You, you experienced right. a real life coming to coming America. To America. Right. Yeah, you know, and I wore Grace's, uh, Prince Grace. Tierra that was flown to me. Uh, mm. It was like a fairy tale wedding, really. It was, wow. and I did the best that I knew how to do, which was I shined a little light on Turks and Caicos Island as far as tourism. So I brought a lot of celebrities over there to buy property. I started the film festival. I built a theater over there. I started the health program. I did the first Walter Wade fight, the first carnival that the country ever seen. Like I really stepped foot there. You know what I mean? And just really focused on what can I do at this island level here, because I'm such a city girl, it's like I had to commit. Mm. So um, because there was corruption of governmental funds, allegedly uh, my, my ex-husband then is fighting a trial in a case now. Oh, wow. So as we were breaking up and going through our divorce, that spawned me around back to America. You know what I mean? The people was like, what happened? What happened? So therefore the reality show 
was uh, breathed life into the reality show. And I mm -hmm. showed everyone actually how I was getting along in this divorce because I walked away with nothing, no alimony, no um, settlement, no anything. So that kind of made me somewhat of a sheroid to a lot of women because I had left my career. Right. So to come back and say, who am I now? Am I still a sex symbol? Do I still have it? Do I reinvent myself? Do I go back to who I think I am or I've known to be? What is going on? And I did that successfully with the reality show. And then I got single ladies after that. And I did that back to back simultaneously. And I was back. And they was like, wow, she looked good. And she's climbing. And she's still positive, And she's still out there. She's still relevant. And so I, you know, I had mustered up the energy to get through that. You know what I mean? And got stronger and stronger from the pain and the mistakes that I've made. And being able to point the finger at me. Right. To, be able to say what was what was my portion and what I've done, you know? And so because people don't know the things that I've seen, the people that I've hosted in my house, um, the conversations I've been privy to, the business opportunities and the drama that mm -hmm. I went through as well, it is great for a sitcom. When I tell you, not a sitcom, a series, because okay. I need to be able to hurt it, you know what I mean? So I need to be able to showcase it in a way that it is, it's black royalty. It's like mm -hmm. black royalty. So I'm excited. A book ain't gonna do it justice. It's a book. It would be an encyclopedia. You know what I mean? <laughs> I got read. And I think it would be really great. And it's it's relevant now because you know all the young ladies right now is trying to secure the bag. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like whether they're marrying it or dating it or being a side chick to it, whatever they trying to get it. You know what I mean? And it's like I've been there, done that. You know what I mean? So it's like let me show you. Let me tell you. Right. And that's the type of person I was telling you about having an old diva around you. Mm -hmm. They can say, sit down, sweetheart. You're not going to always be hot and um, young all the time. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? What's your plan? What's your strategy? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to try to be for this generation now. I want to be able to use my platform for the betterment of being able to be able to reform some people and give over to society some decent folks. Because I, I, I know I've made some mistakes and I just don't want to make those same mistakes anymore. Love it. Yeah. Love it. So, um, so what we're going to do is I got one more question for you and then we're going to take a couple questions from the chat and Absolutely. then we'll, we'll wrap up because I know you said you wanted to make sure people had an opportunity to, uh, to communicate with you. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, if you guys have questions, get those ready. Um, we will help you facilitate that because you can't see the other. I don't know if you have two tablets up right now, but we will help yes. facilitate the questions mm -hmm. uh, from the chat. Um, so I guess my, my question is right now, I just want to talk a little bit about your entrepreneurship to kind of wrap up and then we'll take some questions and we'll get, we'll get your final keys. Um, and you have, I know you have your mattress. I know you have a couple of things going on right now. Um, is this where you are right now or what's let, what's next? Is there something else that we can expect? Um, is you there, know, I, I love teaching my vision board workshop. It's called, it's called life rocks. Right. Life I saw rocks. that. I saw that yeah. on your website. And because I really believe that we need to make our life solid, you know, cause the stronger you are, the more resilient you are, you know? And so, uh, that's sort of my ministry. That's okay. sort of my give back. And, and everything is business because, of course, for me to visit in Houston or to visit your city, I need to get there. You know what I mean? I need a hotel room. I need transportation. I need to bring the supplies. And so, yes, in business, I have to charge something. But by no means am I charging something that's going to take away from your grocery bill and your kids. Not at all. I want it to be affordable. So this is my ministry. This is what you can catch me on any of my Instagram and have flyers there that I will be, you know, posting saying I'm gonna be in this city and I'm gonna be in that city. So I'm coming to a city near you. Okay. <laughs> other than the Jean line, other than the LR home styles for the furniture and mattress, I'm enjoying being a grandmother. I'm enjoying being able to to pop in and out of different shows that I'm doing now because I am building my businesses and I feel powerful. I feel good. I know 2020 has beat us up tremendously. But when it happens that way, you got to find things that you know that you're the reasons why you're blessed and the reason why we're still here. We're in a pandemic right now. But for me, I'm excited to still get my businesses off the ground because I know I'm going to be able to bless some people out there. So as far as what else does Lisa Ray want to do right now, I'm doing it. The only thing that's lacking right now is that significant other. You know, so if y'all can do something and you take my resume, no problem. I'll have no problem with it at all. <laughs> I'll give you my list. But I want to be able to share my life with someone. Yeah. Share my yeah. wealth with someone. And yeah. when I say wealth, 
it does not necessarily mean that I'm wealthy beyond whatever. You got wealth. You got wealth and you got wealth. And you believe that whether you're a hundred near or a thousand near or whatever, you got your own wealth and you live in your life at your own level. When you know that and you you find where you at, be fine where you at. Be encouraged where you are and build from there. Because even though I feel like I'm comfortable, I don't want to get that comfortable where I'm not climbing and building anymore. You know what I mean? I got mm-hmm. things, I got dreams and goals that I haven't done yet. I realize that I haven't done the simple things. I haven't gone to the Grand Canyon. I have wow. never gone to the 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 uh, Eiffel Tower. I've never gone to the Empire State Building, I, Statue of Liberty. Never done that. You know what I mean? So I'm like, right, we got things right in our own backyard that I haven't even gone to. So I want to experience life, and I laugh every day. Good. I make sure I laugh every day, whether I got to put on something comedic. Or make myself laugh or listen to a girlfriend. Laughter is not, look, laughter is funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got- I'm doing what I want to do. I'm happy right now. I can't say that everything is popping the finger, like going straight right. like that. I stress like everybody else. You know what I mean? I'm in this pandemic like everybody else was waiting on my stimulus check. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And then the entertainers, we are more, um, you know, out of luck than the average. Right, right. They don't have funds for us. You know what I mean? So we're looking at grants and we're looking at mm. loans. And me particularly, I don't want a loan because that just means I got to pay you back. And right. I don't want to. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I don't want yeah. that hold hanging over my head because I too have financed things that I have to pay back on. So I don't want to have my credit, um, you know, at an all time low because I'm financing so many things. You know what I mean? It's like one thing at a time, a couple of things at a time. Yeah. And I'm building and I'm doing just like the rest of America. We all got to build together to make America great again, because he is not doing a great job. <laughs> that segues us to the questions from the chat room. So we got a few of them. We're going to do rapid fire because we only got a few minutes left. Okay. So I'll start with the first one and we're just going to go in order. I uh, don't want to leave anybody out. My son is a rapper and uh, this is from Tara Worthy. My son is a rapper and aspiring actor. Do you suggest people enter that career? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Absolutely. And please, because you see how many talented people there are. You know what I mean? Because now we may need a generation to be able to rap about something different so we can have a different narrative. Mm. You know what I mean? Because everybody is is talking about guns and drugs and (laughs) Molly's purposes and all this little stuff. We've been there, got that. What else we got? So be able to come with something that's different. And we absolutely need more entertainment because what did I say? We got to sit down and we got to pass the torch to someone else. And why not it be your son, Terrell? Yep. Bam. There you go, Terrell. All right. Uh, you got it. Next question from okay. Jamia Williams. How do you focus when you have so many projects, ideas swirling around in your head? That's true. If you write it down and make it clear on your vision board, you're going to know the pieces of the puzzle of your everyday life. You're going to come in contact with something that's going to breathe life into all the things that you have written down because those are the desires of your heart. What you don't want to do is convolute everything when you have so much going on. You want to be able to have an outline of those things. What are priorities? What are the things that you can conquer now? What are the things that's a no-brainer? Because the no-brainer things are the things that's going to allow you to move on those quicker. And when you move on those quicker, that means that you're able to dissolve those things. And when you are, when you're able to do that, then you feel a sense of accomplishment because you're like, oh, okay, that's easy. And it gives you that confidence that you need to go on to the next thing. And when you conquer that, it's like, okay. And then when you start building your team, then you become a boss. And when you're a boss, you can dictate. You're a leader. And when you're a leader, you'll be able to say, okay, I'm going to do these. But you do this and you do this, and then we'll come back and intervene next month. All right, El Ray in the house, the boss lady. So my next question is from Grown and Greek. Which role? This is a great question. Which role taught you the most, and what was the lesson? Do 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 do. Which role? Which role? Um, you know what? It was a a, a small film that I had done called Civil Brand, mm-hmm. and it was a prison movie. It was myself, most deaf. Tashina Arnold, um, um, my sister Brat was in it. Um, we had Clifton Powell. That movie, I was the star in, and I went to jail for uh, killing my husband because he was abusing me. But when I was in that role, it didn't require any makeup. 
Mm. And so for the first time, I had been used to playing the pretty roles. <laughs> and so I didn't trust that I was going to look okay to be able to rise to this character. But when I trust that this character was not about the pretty, mm. it made me stretch because I felt a little inadequate. I felt like I wanted to play the pretty when the pretty wasn't supposed to be played. So it allowed me to dig deeper and I dug deeper. And that was for me, one of the best films that I've done. One mm. of the best ones. It was that. all about the character and all about the work. Okay. Uh, this question is from, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this right, Danisha Bitten. Lisa mentioned being added to a contract as a stylist. What are some of the main things you do or what do you look for in the contract to be a part of the union? Okay, uh, right. My hairstylist was not in the union. Uh, while I do believe now what you have to do, there's so many different unions. There's different unions for hairstylists and for makeup artists and for uh, 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 styling for clothes. So you have to find out what's that union. When you go there, go to SAG, uh, after sag.com it will give you all of the union numbers and all of the qualifications for you to be able to know what unions you will belong in because you got to do the body of work it's like internship when you do internship you'll be able to have some work to be able to show them and say this is what i've done and you have to find yourself someone that's already in the business that you're doing their hair or you're working for they'll write you a letter to show that they believe in you that you are professional and that you're worthy of being in the union. You have to get credited hours working on a set. And then once you get so many hours, then you're eligible to get into the union. Mm. Mm. Okay. Learn something new every day. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. When you're in the union, you get paid more money and you're protected. Mm. Gotcha. Like That's any good. other job, you know? Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. So we got time for two. We'll take two more and uh, we'll, we'll get your last key. Um, someone wants to know is uh, Robert Avery wants to know, are you and Debrat doing any collaborations, any collabor collabos? Well, she is so busy right now, you know, with her new love life and <laughs> Disney and Ricky Smiley and growing up hip hop. She's doing the most. Uh, and then she just did a play, uh, set it off this summer. So um, she, I don't know what else she could possibly do. <laughs> Uh, but like I said, everything I'm doing right now is being a businesswoman and getting my businesses off the ground. So I've kind of stopped and stood back from acting mm -hmm. in a series as a series regular because I want to have time to do this. But you'll see me in and out, in and out. And I know I'm not about to rap no time soon. So uh, <laughs> there won't be no collaboration back. <laughs> and no rap coming out. All right. Uh, Carlisha Hewitt, after you write your passions, how do you gauge where to begin? You kind of pointed to this a little bit, but Baby, this this is great. And I don't want to take a lot of time on this because I, I you know, but once you, you got to do a pros and cons list, the things you like and the things you don't, because that'll allow you to narrow it down to what's supposed to be on the board by mm -hmm. categories. Okay. If, and if you don't, can't see this, just DM me at the real L Ray one, the real L Ray, the number one. And let me know that you were in the Keys to Black Wealth Summit and I will be able to talk to you. But once you break down your life in this way, it's going to be things that you catch on there that you see every day because you're supposed to lay eyes on it every day. It's called manifestation. You've mm. got to believe in the power of your words. And so mm. if we see it, we think it, we talk about it. And what happens when you talk about something all the time? It consumes you. And when it consumes you and if it's about making money, then guess what? That's a great thing. Gotcha. So bring me so, up. Okay. So our last final question for you is uh what's what's one of the keys to black wealth? Drop us with some keys to black wealth before you get out of here. Educate yourself. Mm. Educate yourself. Um, because if you don't know how to keep your money, just like my tax person, I don't know about taxes. I don't know about my write-offs. All I know is that here's the receipts that I keep per because you told me I can write off some gas. You told me that I got a, a home office so I can write off some of my mortgage payment out of that. you got to be able to sit down with people that is instrumental in the life that you're living right now. If you have a home, be able to talk to somebody about mortgages. If you are working, you're an entrepreneur, be able to talk to someone about business and how you get tax write-offs. Be able to have someone that can tell you some knowledge, give you things to put inside your head, because once they do, that doesn't leave. 
It doesn't leave. And if you like me, I'm not a reader. When I see a lot of, even if you send me an email, if it's longer than two or three paragraphs, I'm like, oh my God, I'm a bullet point <laughs> person. Bullet point person. So if you're a bullet point person, all you got to do is be able to talk to somebody and be able to say, I want to have a 10 minute conversation with you and write all those things down. Write those things down. And you know what? Another thing, Siri, Siri know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I do want to get this question in though, real quick, because I, I think this is a, actually a dope question. This is from Exposure on Demand TV. As a black woman, as a black woman in media, over the several years I've been in the business where white PR agents keep black celebrities from giving us the exclusives that could breathe life into the black media. What's your thoughts on that? Very good, and I'm gonna tell you why they do that. Um, and it's not really, uh, I don't believe that it's just and only a black thing. What it is, it's a level thing. Um, when you get a Halle Berry, um, Halle Berry will tell one outlet something. She'll choose one of her choice. That's at this level where when she tells that story one time here, it trickles down to everybody else. But if she starts here, it can't trickle up because mm -hmm. then um, they're not going to pull something from a mom and pop establishment opposed to them already being on top. That's why that happens. And so they're granted different people interviews that have a following and a big enough following. So then the, the people that they have brings other people and it blows that up more. So therefore, you'll be able to get your knowledge from there, from up instead of from down. That's what that is. Got so it. you got to just build. Get yourself up there. Me, I believe in building. I, I, I interview with everyone because I'm a people person. But you're not going to always find someone like that. You know what I mean? But when you find someone, do your work. Get on that red carpet. Go to those parties. Slide up on us. I don't know right now because COVID-19 may change all of that. But <laughs> I'm too close. I'm too close. be able to say, hey, I'm up and coming. And I would like for you to grant me an interview because I've been doing this for, for two years. And I blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of people out there that have a heart. Mm -hmm. And right now, the tone in which our country is in, because black is beautiful and black lives matter, it's, it's, we're, we're open now. We're open to, you know what? Our people need some help. And so now, because we're, we're there and we're supporting black businesses, many of us is more open than what we were. So take your chances. Yeah, our, our co-founder, Frank Cage, is, uh, he's on this leverage of blackness right now. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it, we, it made us pay attention. Yeah. It made us pay attention and, and realize that we thought that that was better. We thought white was better, mm -hmm. more professional, more customer. Uh, more all of that and it's not necessarily true but it's because we've been tainted by the lack of our unprofessionalism that mm. has carried us through our, all this time so that just means mm. we got to be better we got to do better and we got to do more we still yeah. got to prove ourselves yep i have to say sean ross said what's up he said he has a stag card and he plans to work with my big sister he made yes. me get that in before we let you go so drop that final key for us and tell people where they can uh find you please Find me on Instagram at the real L Ray One. Facebook is official Lisa Ray McCoy. That's easy. I talk back, and even if I don't, just just nag me. Hey, you said you talk back. That'll be our thing. That'll be our thing. Give me a little time because I'm just getting acclimated to checking the comments because the barbs got me into that. But <laughs> Got to put that in there. Yeah, they went. They went in on you. I did see that. I was like, "Woo, they going in right now." Yeah, they going. They going in, bro. They, they going, going in. in. But you know, again, that is that. That's their opinion as well. And so, right, we, we plead the fifth or not. You know. So I encourage for people to be able to reach out. If you got something positive you want to share and you want to tell me, by all means, bring it on. If you don't, then just skip my page and go on to the next one. That's all. That part. And then also, don't forget to stop by the Virtual Vendor Expo. Lisa Ray, her information is there. Check out her products. Again, she's a grassroots entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Lisa Ray, we thank you so much for giving us our time. Shout out to Sean Ross. Um, thank you for just being with Keys to Black Wealth and sharing your knowledge, your inspiration, and then all the keys that you gave us today. It was absolutely amazing. So I enjoyed it, and I thank you for giving me the platform. Yes, ma'am. Hey. Hey, hey. So, y'all, we got a treat for